wearing a balaclava as well, sweating my lips off. All right, so you know that band called Death Grips, the one where they have like a drummer that plays like mental on that and sometimes wears handcuffs. And the like matey that's the rapper, sort of screamer, psychedelic matey that jumps around with no t-shirt on as well, skinny and got loads of tattoos. And that other matey that like wears well good glasses and plays keyboard and plays up like, mental beats and that. They're called Death Grips. I don't know if you heard of them or whatever, but like, my band played them quite a while back and I want to tell that story now. I was in this band called Witch Cult and like it was just this stupid little band that me and my mates got together and we just decided to start because like we were bored and we were playing in other bands at the time and we loved power violence, we loved doom and we loved like experimental music. We all just basically got together at my flat one night and we were just saying like stupid band names, doom band names and we were making up ridiculous band names. You know like Electric Wizard is like a really typical name like Acid Witch or Acid King or whatever, you know, like Goblin Cock or whatever. I can't remember who came up with the name, but one of us came up with Witch Cult because we loved the album by Electric Wizard called Witch Cult Today. And we started to practice in my kitchen. And I remember I got like the rock band drum kit, you know, the real old one that like when you hit it, it made like ka 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 ka. Anyway, we got in my kitchen, right? And I got this rock band kit. I think I had like acoustic guitar or something. We were writing like real stupid lyrics and playing like doom riffs with really fast blast beats, like spaz influenced, infest influence and electric wizard and Black Sabbath influenced. It was it just, it was just weird. Like it was the weirdest mix, but we were all laughing our heads off and thought it was really funny. So I'm gonna jump back a little bit, right, and tell you about how I found out about Death Grips. And basically I was on this website that I always used to go on. I think it was called Cut and Paste. It's where I used to find all of my power violence downloads and all of albums that you couldn't find on iTunes or Spotify. Was Spotify even out back then? Probably not. It's basically a website where I could find all my music that I could download that I had on vinyl that I didn't have download codes for and put onto my iPod and listen into the van while we were touring around. So I always used to go on this website, right? I used to troll through it for hours and hours looking for bands. And I remember one time that Death Grips just popped up like the mixtape ex-military. I remember looking at the cover thinking like, it looks pretty power violence, but apart from the font and stuff, like if it was black and white, it'd be very power violence, the cover and that. So I just downloaded it because it looked pretty interesting and I listened to it and I was just like completely blown away because I didn't really listen to hip hop that much. You know what I mean? Like I listened to Eminem when I was in school and listened to Outkast and all that stuff, but I was never really into like experimental hip hop or any sorts of hip hop really. So when I listened to Death Grips, I was blown away because they were using samples from like Black Flag and using like tons and tons of heavy noise influenced stuff and really weird stuff. Basically I was a lot into Crystal Castles at the time. And when I found out about Death Grips, I was just like, this is mental, it absolutely blew my mind and I was so into it and I couldn't wait to show our drummer, Fifi, because I know he was into a lot of electronic and weird experimental, like underground electronic stuff. So I got into his car and he was like, oh, I got something to play you and put on Death Grips. And I was like, mate, I knew it. I knew you would know about this band. That album, Ex Military, was on our radio in the van, like constantly. And I remember as a band, we just really, really loved Death Grips, what they stood for, how they sounded, like their whole image, the, the way they were so, mysterious and like smoke and mirrors that we really, really love that. The money store hadn't come out yet. It was just ex-military. And I remember someone writing to someone in the band and saying like, oh, do you want to pay off death grips? And at this point I was traveling, right? I was in, where was I? I think it was in Germany or something. I'd just been to Fluff Fest and I got to like a matey's house and they were in a party and that and we were walking through a woods. And I remember getting a text on my phone being like, do you want to play of death grips? And I was just like, yeah, all right. Like, <laughs> of course, obviously, like I just phoned them straight away, one of the band members or whatever. And I was like, yeah, obviously we want to play with Death Grips. And I remember them saying that it was going to be in a bar in London for free, like this tiny little bar. I don't know if anybody knows this bar. It's called the Old Blue Last. It's tons and tons of bands have played and I played there before as well. And I just remember thinking like, this is going to be the most mental show ever. We turned up to the venue and it's so small. Like it, you could fit like a few hundred people in there, if that. And I remember thinking like, if this is a free show, there's gonna be so many people there. It's gonna be absolutely packed. It was Death Grips first ever UK show. I think it might have even be the first time that Death Grips have been over to Europe, but I might be wrong about that. So Death Grips show up, we don't see them at all. Like we, we, we know they're there, but we were getting like super excited, especially our drummer, cause he loves Zach Hill, the drummer from Death Grips. I've been listening to the album nonstop, ex-military. And I remember like our singer and our, our drummer and everything like they, they were all going nuts about it basically and we were super super excited i remember getting around to setting up our equipment and playing and death grips weren't around like they weren't watching and the, the, it started getting more and more packed we played our set in that like as usual 10 minutes long like 
power violence or whatever, like screaming around. I remember smashing up my guitar and cutting up my hand pretty badly that night, wearing a balaclava as well, sweating my lips off. As we came off, I remember like loads of people were there, like into Witch Cult, were enjoying it in that, but everyone was there for Death Grips. Obviously, like everyone was there for Death Grips. They start to set up their equipment and I remember Zach Hill like taking both of these monitors, like these monitors were huge. They were like in front of the stage for the vocals, you know? He took like two of these monitors and put it on the front of his bass drum. So it was like facing him. So all he could hear was all of the keyboards and all of the vocals like insanely loud. And then he started to set up his kit and it was just like the most minimal kit. It had like a huge crash, which he said to us afterwards was made out of the inside of a washing machine. And when he hit it, it just sounded like completely broken, all chipped and smashed up. And it sounded amazing. I remember them starting to sound check and they played Tachyon or something. They played it without MC Ride on the stage. It was just the matey that played keys, but I don't even know his name. What's his name? The matey that plays keyboards in Death Grips. Don't know. I remember MC Ride getting on the stage with like a black hoodie, super skinny black jeans with like his belt done like super tight with it hanging down, wearing a pair of uh, black DMs. And he just took his hood down, unzipped his hoodie, and he had like no t-shirt on, just as always, like standard MC ride. They just started to play, and it was the loudest, most intense thing. I remember Zach Hill just absolutely pounding on that horrible washing machine cymbal, and just everything being turned up super, super loud. And they played everything from ex-military. I've never had so much fun at a show in my life, seriously. Like, there's been tons of shows that I've played in the past, like I said, with, with Napalm Death, and back in the day with like, metalcore bands like Job for a Cowboy, Syphilic Carnage, and all these other amazing bands that I've played with in the past. Nothing is as good as playing with Death Grips. Like that was one of the most amazing times in my life. And I think it was so weird that it just came up so fast and we were just thrown in the, in the deep end or whatever. I don't even think we got paid for that show. Did we, did we get paid for that show? Anyway, right, so we, we played the show and we got off and I went over to the merch table because I wanted to try and get ex-military on vinyl. And I remember there was a matey like selling their merch. He wasn't from Death Grips. Just like a matey with long blonde hair standing behind the merch table. They had some t-shirts and they had tapes. So they had ex-military on tape and I opened it up and it had like Death Grips written across the top of the tape and it had like nooses either side of the tape, like either side of the reels. And he gave it to me. He was like, yeah, here you go. Like your, your band was pretty cool. Like just take the tape or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I, I don't know why, like, I'm so sorry and everyone's gonna kill me in the comments, but in this moment, like I took the tape and I thought to myself, no, I want the vinyl. Like I don't, I don't have a tape player, I'm not gonna play a tape. So I turn around and I give it to our drummer. Like I'm just like, hey, I know you like tapes, you're into all that weird like tape stuff, you take the tape, I don't need it. Seriously, am I an idiot, mate? That tape is probably worth so much money now. I've got so many noise tapes there and if I had that, it would be in a frame, mate. Trust me, I would have that in a frame somewhere. So I just give the tape to the matey, right? Like the drummer in our band and he's just going off of this tape and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I'll just order the vinyl or whatever. So I order the vinyl online and this is the original, right? Like I, I, a lot of people knew Death Grips back then, but I don't think it was enough to like go mental about this vinyl release or whatever. So I ordered from their website online, like the only place you could order it from. It got stuck somewhere, like stuck at a place of work, which I sent it to to be sure because I didn't want it to get lost. And I remember like it being there and someone like there was this mix up basically, like someone like moved away or whatever and I couldn't get there and the person was never in. And basically that person stole my record. So I just bought the bootleg of it. I got like this double LP of it, like super trashy, like glossy cover. I'll show it in another video. And then my best mate, Nick, buys me Jenny Def, right? He buys me it like the original, you know, like double LP and that, like gatefold. So he gives it to me, right? And we go on tour. This was like quite a while back. We went on tour and I remember leaving it in the van. Also lost it. Don't know where it went. So I've got like no Def Grip stuff. I had the original ex-military and I had the original Jenny Def and I had a cassette of ex-military, all gone, mate. Don't even know where they are. Some matey's sitting at home with like an ex-military original that he just got in the post and thought it was his. Like, lucky day, mate. Lovely. Cheers. That was a story about how I played with Death Grips. Um, if you want to hear any other stories, comment below. I don't know what you're going to ask me because you don't know any stories that I know in my mind. So like I said in my last video, I've been super, super busy, but every single Wednesday I'm uploading at 6 p.m. and every Sunday I'm uploading at 12 p.m. noon. And this is all German time, so it, I'm living in Berlin, if no one knows that, that. So I'm always uploading Berlin time, so you might be an hour behind, or if you live in the US, like loads of, well loads of hours behind. Anyway, I'm mumbling again. I'm gonna go have a cup of tea, because I'm knackered, and I will see you on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Cheers! Right, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Quando 